I would like to give a quick shout out to MathJot, an online math calculator built by engineers for engineers, which I actually co-founded. It's a clean, intuitive tool that lets you write out your calculations like a notepad, but smarter. You can define variables, use systems functions, and your entire work process stays organized and visual. Whether you're a student, engineer, or just someone like me who loves clarity when running the numbers, MathJot makes it faster to think, write, and solve. It's free to get started and you can use my code IRON25 to get 25% off on annual subscription. Give MathJot a try, link in the description. So remember when baby boomers were always the wealthiest people in the room? Well, that's changing. In this video, we're going to look at the latest analysis from KPMG who has crunched the ABS data to review the average household wealth across each generation in Australia. A quick heads up, these figures are mean averages, not mediums. That means that they divide the total wealth by the number of households, and these can be skewed higher by a few super wealthy households. So if the number feel a little inflated compared to your lived experience, that's why. All right, let's dig into the wealth story, starting with the big one, property. According to the KPMG report, property is still the dominant form of wealth for most Australians across all age groups. Baby boomers are the generation who were born during 1946 to 1964, so they are currently 61 to 79 years old. The average property wealth they hold is 1.3 million. Gen X, who are currently 45 to 60 years old, surprisingly hold more property assets, averaging 1.31 million. Meanwhile, millennials who are between 29 to 44 are sitting at 750,000. And Gen Z, who are 13 to 28 years old, are starting out with 69,000 in housing wealth. So we can see Gen X has overtaken baby boomers in property wealth. So what's going on? This could be the early phase of the great wealth transfer where boomers are beginning to downsize, sell off, or pass on their homes to their children, who are Gen X and millennials. While wealth is shifting on paper, home ownership rates tell a different story. Younger Australians are still struggling to buy their first home, largely due to rising inflation and stagnant wages. Now, let's talk about shares. Gen X lives here too, with an average of 256,000 in equities, followed by boomers who hold 206,000. Again, millennials and Gen Z have far less invested in the stock market, with average 51,000 and 7,000. As the youngest boomers are nearing their retirement, they are likely downsizing their share portfolio to mitigate risk and stock up more cash for security to fund their retirement. Meanwhile, younger generations face tighter budgets, student debt, and rising living costs, which leave less room to invest. When it comes to other assets, the KPMG report shows that it consists mostly of superannuation and business assets. Even though superannuation was only introduced in 1992, when boomers were 28 to 46 years old, which means that the older boomers might miss out the 20-something years of the concessional tax benefits. Well, the Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, this House last night passed the superannuation guarantee levy. In doing so, it has entrenched in legislation a great reform which will be of great benefit to coming generations of Australians. Mr Speaker, for the first time in our history, well in advance of reform in other advanced industrial countries, ordinary Australians will be able to build a decent nest egg for their retirement as a result of the policies of the Labor movement. People now on average weekly earnings, Mr Speaker, will be able to retire on an income Twice the old age pension. Twice the old age pension. Boomers still top the chart here with 641,000 on average. They are ahead of Gen X, who have an average super balance of 586,000. Millennials and Gen Z hold 260,000 and 43,000 in super, reflecting less time in the workforce. This situation will change over time as the younger generations catch up on the career years. That's assuming, of course, they stay consistently employed and make regular contributions, which isn't always a given in today's gig economy. Now, onto cash holdings. And this one clearly shows how risk appetite shifts with age. Boomers are switching from other assets to cash for safety and liquidity as they're in the don't lose what you got stage. On average, boomers hold 242,000 in deposits that's followed by Gen X with 176,000 per household. Millennials and Gen Z households hold 104,000 and 26,000 on average. Younger generations, meanwhile, often don't have enough extra income to build large cash reserves. And with inflation still eating into your savings, many prefer to invest instead when they can. Second last, let's talk about debt. As you'd expect, boomers have lower levels of household debt, averaging 82,000 than Gen X and Millennials. 
These two generations each owe more than 400,000 primarily in mortgages. Gen Z has the lowest debt of 49,000, mostly student loans and short-term credit card debt. Most of Gen X and millennials are at the stage of life as a sandwich generations, supporting children, aging parents, and servicing mortgages all at once. No wonder debt weighs heavily on their mental load. For boomers, most mortgages are paid off, which is why their net wealth looks so strong. Finally, we come to the final equation, assets minus debts to arrive at net wealth. Boomers are out in front by a solid margin with 2.31 million per household. That's well ahead of Gen X with 1.88 million. Millennials and Gen Z lag with an average net worth of 757,000 and 96,000. This makes sense. Wealth builds over time, and older generations have had decades to accumulate through home equity, investments, and compounding returns. It's always fascinating to see how we stack up against the national averages, but it's also important to zoom out and remember, averages don't tell your story. A Gen X single parent might face very different financial realities than a dual income household. A 50-year-old recovering from divorce might need time to rebuild wealth from scratch. A 30-year-old freelancer might have lumpy income but be investing like a pro. So rather than comparing yourself to a number on the chart, focus on your roadmap, build wealth intentionally.